Hello and welcome to today's edition of Frightfully Forgotten's Trash or Treasure. I am the Trash. I'm the Treasure. And today we're going to be covering 1989's Moon Trap. So the movie starts off in 1969 and we see the original moon landing. Neil Armstrong, that's one small step for man, all that crap. <laughs> <laughs> all that fake crap. <laughs> that uh, Stanley Kubrick directed. Just as they're leaving in the module, you see this robot come up out of the sand and start watching them leave. It fast forwards to present day and we get introduced to Jason Grant and Ray Tanner, who are a couple of astronauts. Hanging around up in space, <laughs> yeah. chilling out. Just circling the earth, I guess. Ray's all sleeping and everything. <laughs> a craft kind of floats on by, they radio earth and they tell him to go investigate. So Jason Grant goes out to the ship and when he goes out there, he finds this like egg thing. He also sees a mummified body of what looks to be like a human being. They take all this stuff back to Earth. They start analyzing the, the body and that egg sack thing. And they find the out that- The ball sack? <laughs> <laughs> they find out that there's moon dust on all this stuff and all this stuff carbon dates back to 14,000 years ago. While they're kind of arguing back and forth about what they should do, that egg sack opens up and all these wires and everything start shooting out and the robot starts to put itself back together using like spare parts from the computers and body parts too from that body that's laying there. Goes on a bit of a killing spree inside the complex. It's huge too, this yeah. thing. <laughs> There's a bunch of like guards and everything that gotta shoot the thing down. But Jason Grant goes crawling through all these like, all these ducks. These ducks <laughs> kind of snipers down this robot and kills it. He's hanging out with the sun, all doing these push ups yeah, and yeah, everything. Yeah, he's all old. <laughs> <laughs> Then he gets a call from Ray, he's all drunk at the bar, shooting his mouth off with all this top secret information. So he yeah. goes down to the bar and Ray tells him, well, guess what? Green lit the mission to go back to the moon and find out what the hell all this is that we found on that ship. They go back to the moon and they land on the moon with the landing module and they leave a third guy up in space orbiting in the yeah. shuttle. Jason and Ray hop on this rover and start driving around, <laughs> yeah. come across this temple thing that's there. Why they never saw it before, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's all huge. Yeah. <laughs> so they walk into this giant temple, these huge big halls, it's like massive. They stumble upon this little area and they see this woman that's like in stasis. Press a couple of buttons and yeah. This chamber opens up and she comes out. Of course, she's all hot and everything. Yeah, yeah. She's got some mullet, of course, <laughs> an alien mullet. <laughs> hey, it's the 80s. Yeah. So they're trying to communicate to this woman and get ambushed by all these alien robots. They're trying to fend them off and this big, huge alien robot just picks up Ray, hucks him. Yeah, and it's all kind of slow Slowed because it's the moon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jason runs over and like, oh, you know, oh, buddy, and they kind of have a little moment there and he kind of dies yeah. in his arms. So Jason and this alien woman are kind of stuck on the moon. The rovers run out of batteries. Yeah. They go back to where the landing module was and it's gone. They're stuck on the moon with these alien robots after them. So if you want to find out what happens at the end of Moon Trap, well, keep watching. So that brings us to the treasure of this movie. But before that, what are we drinking? Oh, we're drinking Boyd's Journey, a Sierra Nevada clone. Mm. What's the treasure of Moon Trap? One of the treasures is the plot of the movie, the whole idea and concept of the movie, which is really cool. And it's really neat how they managed to cram a lot of ideas into this movie that either hadn't been really done before or explored before in other movies or you see later in like even Prometheus human origin stories and stuff like that. Yeah. It was really neat actually in a B movie like this. Another treasure about this movie is the actors. Well we have the B movie master himself, Bruce Campbell, is in this, mm -hmm. and he really kind of steals his show. Yeah. He knocks it out of the park. He's got a great death scene, too. Yeah. I like how he dies. Yeah. And I like how he comes back yeah, to that's, life. That's really cool, too. And we have Walter Koenig, who famously played Chekhov 
in the Star Trek series and, of course, all the original Star Trek movies. That's right. Has anybody ever told you you scream a lot like Chekhov? No, I don't. Yeah, you do. Like that time I beat you in Mario Kart? Ah, uh, yeah! Beat you again! Yeah! That time we were drinking and we ran out of beer? You know that was our last beer, eh? And that time when you hid my VCR remote. Their young enter through the ear canal and wrap themselves round the cerebral cortex, rendering their victim highly susceptible to suggestion. It's just a gummy worm. Well, at least I don't dress like Chekhov in search for Spock. <laughs> And the characters, too, are quite good. And especially the relationship between the characters. I really yeah. like the relationship between Jason and Ray. Really good buddies. You feel their tightness. Yeah, that's right. You know, you really feel and believe that they're, like, best buddies that's been through a lot together. Believe their hierarchy in the movie, too, right? Because yeah. Jason is the commanding yeah. officer. Ray respects the fact that Jason outranks him. Very Star Trek-like. Uh-huh. Hmm. The music for this movie is actually pretty decent. It's not great, but it fits the movie pretty well. Very ominous and eerie tone to it, sort of just like the moon. It does help you feel like you're there. And the pacing for this movie is really good too. For like a 93 minute movie, it crams a lot in those 93 minutes. Quite rapid fire, really. Mm -hmm. It's like bang, 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 bang. And the effects for this movie are, are actually pretty decent. The robots are pretty cool, you know, yeah. for what they are. The stop motion parts where like those tentacles are coming out of the pod looks really good. Yeah, yeah, that's neat. And the sets are really good. Like, man, the moon is looks like the fucking moon. It looks real. Yeah. It looks it's, awesome. It's a good moon set. <laughs> yeah. What if they bore that from Kubrick? Hmm, yeah. <laughs> Probably. Not that we believe the moon landing was faked, but it's just funny to joke about. <laughs> <laughs> and that leads us to the trash about Moon Trap. And it's also, on the flip side of the coin, some of the effects are kind of trash, too. Right. These models they use, these super <laughs> blatant models, like when they're on that rover. Yeah. And you can tell it's just some toys yeah. going down some <laughs> <laughs> sand or something in a fucking sandbox. And the footage is all kind of skippy <laughs> yeah. too and everything. Like, it's all jittery. When they're floating in space, it's just like some toy they got at the fucking toy <laughs> store. <that> they're kind of <laughs> floating yeah. through the space. And it's funny because, like, a lot of those effects happen, like, right in the same chunk of the movie. So it throws you off because mm -hmm. in the beginning, there's all these good effects. Yeah. The middle, there's like all these shitty models and stuff, and then at the end, it gets good again. So there's like this little chunk in the movie where it's kind of tacky. Right, yeah. The dialogue for this movie is is pretty cheesy as well, it's right? It's a pretty <laughs> cheesy dialogue, yeah. <laughs> cheesy to the point where it almost makes the movie into sort of a half comedy. The dialogue between the characters, for the most part, is good. It's yeah. the one-liners, the cheesy one-liners. It doesn't fit the tone, the serious tone of the <laughs> movie, right? right? Yeah. Like, the final frontier. The final frontier. <laughs> like, yeah, we know you're from Star Trek. You don't need to put all that in there. Like, just, yeah, I just ram that home. You can't escape yeah. that, right? <laughs> yeah. And there is a lot of silliness in this movie. Stuff is just like, oh, okay, like, <laughs> they're just hanging out in space before they find the ship hanging out. Yeah. Wasting taxpayers' money just <laughs> yeah. up there is like do nothing. doing nothing, you know? And the yeah. fact that they stumble upon this ship and like no radar or anything said, like, by the way, guys, there's a big fucking spaceship up there. Some enormous ship. It's kind of like, oh, what's that? Gets with that young chick, too, that alien, <laughs> alien chick, yeah. And he's all old, yeah. like, what the hell? <laughs> They set up that tent thing and they've got all these... <laughs> the unrealistic space tent that you can just live on the moon in this space tent. Like, it's like this big. Yeah, it's yeah. Some case and they press the button and turn yeah. into some huge thing and they can go in there and, like, live. Yeah, there's no air or anything. Like, take off their helmets to get all naked. You have these robots that are trying to kill you. Yeah. That should be the last thing on yeah. your fucking... Yeah. In mind. And getting with some <laughs> alien broad who knows like what kind of weird disease she's gonna give yeah, you. Yeah, whatever. In this space tent that they can like, okay, we've got one of those, just colonize the moon already. Yeah, yeah. Some moon <laughs> can tent. Can they make a fucking town in there? <laughs> yeah. 
Another piece of trash for this is the pacing as well, which we mentioned for the treasure, but there's also problems with the pacing though too. Paced almost too quick to where it's glossed over a lot of things, Look, right? explanation for things, they don't fit in. The fact that they're going to the moon back and forth so quick makes it feel like it should take place in the future or something that you can go back and forth all like, oh, this is go to the moon. Mm -hmm. But I think they only did that to cut the runtime down. Yeah. Things that should be drawn out for probably runtime make it seem unrealistic and <laughs> unexplained. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so it does feel like there are holes here and there yeah. in the movie, right? Yeah, you'd have a, a movie with this kind of concepts. Yeah, and... we'll have a lot of plot holes. And this <laughs> yeah. movie's full of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Moon Trap, Trash or Treasure? It's treasure. It's treasure too. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot of fun. It is. Even though it's silly and full of plot holes. Uh, come on, you got Walter Koenig in there, you got Bruce Campbell. What you, more do you need? You got really? alien robots on the moon. Yeah, yeah. Hot space babes. You see alien boobs. Yeah, I mean, come on. It's a lot like a Roger Corman movie. Yeah, maybe with a little better production value. Yeah, but, yeah. but if, if you like those types of cheesy, late 80s movies, this is right up your alley. Exactly. And until next time, keep drinking. Keep drinking.